Hi, I'm Debbie Walters and I am back for part two of Designing with Strips and Curves, the basic set. In part one, I cut out the pieces for the quarter circle and the L shape for that basic drunkard's path block. I'm going to show you how to piece them. I told you that it's easy to do. These are very gentle curves and they are quite easy to piece together. So let's get started with that. First thing I need to do is fold this in half and mark my center. Just finger press is fine. I just need to know where that center part is. This is the way the block is going to go together. So I know that this is my first part of my seam. I'm now going to turn this over right sides together and match these edges so that they are straight and this corner um, is matched. This is a real key element of making this block come out square at the end rather than come along here and do a jig. And now matching the center spot. What we're going to do is work in uh, half of the curve the first at first and then the second half. I'm going to start with start with my leader. My little furry person is on my pedal here. Oops. Uh, start with the leader because that way my beginning of the seam here does not bunch up and make a tangled mess. I'm using a quarter inch foot. Pull out that pin. You don't want to run over those. I'm using a quarter inch foot because although I've been quilting for 30 years, it still gives me the accuracy I need on a curved seam. It's very easy to kind of wobble along as much as I think I can do a quarter inch seam accurately. And if you look at this, it's practically laying itself in place without any pins. So what I'm going to do is concentrate on about an inch in front of that needle. And whatever happens down here, we're not going to worry about right now. The purple thing is very helpful because it lets you scoot these edges when you need to to match them up. Remember, one inch at a time. This is not a fast seam to put in, but it gives you such beautiful curves and interest in your quilt. Now that we've reached the middle, I can pull out this pin so I don't run over it. And I'm going to move it to the end. And again, match up those straight edges and the corner. And pin. And I like to pin a little bit away from the edge because now I've really matched this section. Back to the middle. And we'll work those seams. Now see it laying in place the rest of the way. It's such a nice, gentle curve and works so well. This is the section where you're most likely to get pleats or uh, little tucks that want to form like that. What you can do is leave your needle down, lift your presser foot up. This is a time when your knee lift would really come in handy. There isn't one on this machine though. And you can work it the top layer back towards this side and you can eliminate those. 
magic, huh? Get rid of that little plate. Don't want a plate. Remember to pull out your pans. You don't want to run over them. Not good for your needles. Not good for your machine. I stitched this in dark gray thread, which I would not normally do. Uh, but I wanted you to be able to see that seam. It's a very nice quarter inch seam. And when we fold it out, I would not normally iron these seams because when I do my layout, I might move blocks three or four times before I decide where I want them. And when I lay them on the design wall and I get it finished, Whatever I put next to this, if it has a seam that meets, I want one seam allowance to go one way and the other seam allowance to go the other. And it's just easier to take those two down and sew that seam allowance, I mean, iron that seam allowance um, at that time. So that's the Drunkard's Path block. In addition to that, in the basic set, remember we have the L shape the wave, which is a replacement for the quarter circle, because it is a quarter circle if you include that, and a half circle to make some more interest in your blocks. This, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you, is just as easy as that gentle curve is, because it's not, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Same thing, we're going to mark the centers with a finger press. And as uh, I said, the outside curve always goes on the bottom. This is the way this is going to match up. So this edge goes to this edge. And again, I want to match up the straight edge and that corner and pin it. Start with the leader. And stitch the very beginning of this seam right up to the needle pin. Pull out that pin and now match up the centers. This tight a curve, it's often helpful to clip just a little bit. And I I'm very careful that I'm not clipping far enough that I would be into uh, the main body of that piece, just in the seam allowance. Matching now only what I need to, which is right in front of the needle. Purple thing, very helpful. Take it slow. It's not a fast seam, but boy, does it look good when it's in a quilt. Now again, that's trying to lay itself in place. So we're just going to take advantage of that. If it's going to be that cooperative, let's go. On these tighter curves, you're more likely to get your little puckers going, but remember you just press them off in that direction because they're only on that top layer. Ooh, there's a good one. Needle down, press your foot up, and smooth that out. 
match the edges and go for it. I'm going to sew all the way to the pin and pull it out. And then we're going to match up the straight edges, straight edges and that corner and pin. Clip a little bit along here. Tiny little bites, don't take big ones. And match up the edges. By the way, our camera person tonight is my daughter Kim, who is also my webmistress and the director and producer and sound person of all these videos. Hi Kim. Hello. Look at that go in there. Isn't that beautiful? Little bits at a time. Okay, now we've got a big pleat wanting to happen here. Press your foot up and work at it. And this may be harder to miss that pleat because it really wants to happen. see if we manage to miss it. Nope, we got a little tiny pleat there. But I can take out the couple of stitches on either side and restitch that uh, if I want to. I can also use some decorative uh, stitching on top of it if I wanted to conceal it and not mess with it, but I think it's better to take it out and restitch just a small section. Okay, took out that section and we're just going to restitch starting back here. As I said, these are not particularly easy seams, but they just add so much to your quilt that they are worth the effort. Okay, I'm going to start pulling way back here to try to straighten out that little spot. Okay, we got rid of the pucker. That wasn't so bad. After this seam is put in, then the L shape goes on this quarter circle just like it did in the drunkard's path piece and you'll sew this seam just like we did with the red and white um, previously. I really really encourage everyone to try this at least two or three times because you're not going to be perfect the first time nobody is uh, it just takes a little bit of practice and give it a try you may find out that uh, you really like it or you like the challenge there are some 
on our website there are some other on our YouTube uh, channel on our YouTube channel excuse me uh, there are some other videos by other instructors that will give you some other methods of doing these curved seams and you're welcome to look at those find out which one is the best for you now I'll show you uh, an alternative method that is prepared edge applique 